I was doing really good. My time got down. Um, I was in great shape, in the best shape of my life. But my Achilles just would not get better over time, no matter how much time I took place, um, took time off. So I just decided to just go into coaching. So I coach high school, cross country and track. And then I work at Orange Theory Fitness as a fitness coach. Um, throughout that time, while I was training, I did personal train people on the side. Um, I had my own actual result. I lost close to 40 pounds to get back into running after college because I gained weight after I graduated college. So I lost about 40 pounds so that I could get back into shape to start training. And then that kind of how I started helping other people along their journey. Wow, that's really amazing. And, you know, as mom, I've followed you your entire life. And like I said, I'm very, very proud of you. So what I want you to do, I want you to just kind of walk us through one of your typical days of your fitness routine. Let's just start there. Well, it's a little different now that we're in quarantine. Um, <laughs> so I work out any time of the day. Last night I worked out at 11 p.m. Oh, my so. God. <gasps> So it doesn't matter because my sleep schedule is kind of off right now. I just wake up when I wake up and I go to sleep whenever I'm tired. So I guess yesterday, let's talk about yesterday. Yesterday was Tuesday. Um, I wake up. I always start my day with celery juice. Why? Tell us about that. Fresh celery juice is good for your immune system. It's good to help with bloating, especially women, because we get that around our stomach. Um, it cleanses your digestive system. It helps with your liver. Um, it can aid in weight loss. Um, it helps with your skin. It gives you energy. There's a lot of things that celery juice can help benefit. So I drink that first thing before I eat anything, at least 30 minutes before I eat anything. I started doing that probably when we went into quarantine. So, oh, wow. What is that? Almost eight weeks ago? About eight weeks. About have eight you noticed weeks. a difference? I have noticed a difference. I feel like my skin is clearer. I do feel like I have a little bit more energy. I don't feel as bloated anymore. Um, and I just, it, I mean, I do feel good. It doesn't taste bad to me. I was doing it wrong at first. I was adding water and lemon, but I just take it straight now, just straight celery juice, hmm. about eight to 10 ounces every morning. Wow. And then depending on the day that I have, um, I still run the social media for Lumbee Wilson's track page. So I'll either post on there, I'll post on my own social media, I'll edit some videos. I have like three videos that I need to post now for fitness videos um I do real estate as well and I'll make some phone calls or I'll follow up with some clients and try to schedule some um, showings for later on in the day and then I try to figure out when I'm gonna work out in quarantine I, I it's really hard to work out because you're lazier <laughs> you around. so it takes a little bit so um, my god sister and I have decided to work out together. So I go with her schedule. So whenever she can work out mm -hmm. is when I work out, mm -hmm. which is usually around six or 7 PM. Okay. Um, and what do you do? How do you guys work out? So right now I like to do different, um, training programs that I see online okay. so that I could learn how to create one for myself. Mm -hmm. So I found a trainer online. Actually, um, I used to have a trainer when I was running track back in 2016, 15 and 16. He was really good. Um, he passed away, though. Um, mm. He died in a car accident on the 91 freeway. It was very tragic. but He was mm. really, really good and really well known. So that guy, they used to work out together. So he has his own online business and mm. online program. So I follow his program right now. It's a 30 day program. Mm -hmm. um I follow that sometimes <laughs> right now and then I'll incorporate my own whatever I feel like working I'm big on growing the booty and, <laughs> and getting nice legs so anything that has to do with my legs and my booty I will do so at 59 I already have the rear end 
but can I get my legs right? Well, just because you can always shape your rear end, your booty. Mm -hmm. So some people think that they have big booties, but they don't. Mm -hmm. um, or they want to have like a cup or they want it to poke out more, a little mm -hmm. bit more shape to it. Yeah, and I need shape. I, I need that right there. When, when you're working natural, when you're working to build your butt natural, it takes a little bit, I don't want to say a little bit, it takes longer than those who can go and get it done. Because that's the phase we have, that's the, um, the era that we're in right now, people mm -hmm. will go and pay for their bodies to be done. Flat I can relate to that. Flat stomach, <laughs> big booty, because that's what we see on Instagram all the time. That's what they advertise. That's what uh, women think that that's what men like. They feel like that makes them more attractive and things mm -hmm. like that. So when you do it natural, it takes a little bit. I, don't, I keep saying a little bit. It takes a lot longer than it does when you just go and get it done. What about so, when you've waited for like, you know, a hundred years like me and I want to start now at 59, where do I start? You just got to start. That That's is the true. biggest thing is starting. Most people don't know where to start. So then they don't start. If you just take it one day at a time, whether it's running for 20 minutes or walking for 20 minutes, or let's say today you're just going to do 10 squats. 10 push-ups and 10 abs mm -hmm. then the next day you do it again then the next day you do it again then you can start adding to that number or adding more exercises it's just starting the oh, first man. day is always the hardest and then once you start to see some results mm -hmm. you'll get a little bit more motivated but motivation comes and goes yeah You're i've had a lot of first days i've had a lot <laughs> yeah. of day ones which is okay. I've had day ones. I have a lot of day ones as well. The key is going to day two and then day three. And then just, if you keep starting over, it's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. You just have to keep going and don't just stop. So back to the celery, how do you prepare it? I, I'm taking notes. I got my notepad and I'm going to do this. So how do I prepare it? So at first I was using my Nutribullet mm -hmm. literally for probably what, six weeks now. Mm -hmm. And I was cutting up the celery into mm -hmm. little pieces mm -hmm. and then putting it in the Nutribullet mm -hmm. and then taking a little bitty strainer, like this big, I bought the smallest strainer ever. <laughs> and then I would strain it and then I would um, store it. And okay. That's how I would make it. But now mm -hmm. I have a juicer and it's like five minutes. It's so easy. Mm -hmm. I still have to strain it a little bit because it has the pulp. Some people drink the pulp. I don't drink the pulp. I'll just drink the juice by itself. And Does it make then, a difference? I, it might. It just, I just don't like the way that it tastes. Like mm -hmm. the, the chalk, the chalky taste. Grainy it, stuff. Uh -huh. it, just, it doesn't taste good to me. It would seem like I was chewing if I could have that part of it. I, I think I'm actually, you know, getting some food. Right. And everyone said, why can I just eat it? Well, you would have to eat a, question. a ton of celery to get the same benefit of drinking it. Okay. Like a ton. Is How many it, stalks do you use? <laughs> I like the bougie celery, the ones that already come cut up. The celery stalks. So my celery bags are like two dollars or three dollars because I buy them already in the pre-cut celery stalks. I find that it tastes way better in my <laughs> opinion, uh when I buy the actual celery and I have to cut the ends off and things like that. It doesn't taste the same. It, <laughs> it's nasty to me. So okay. I'll buy at least four or five of those bags at a time. So what is that, like 10 to $15 on celery? And how long does that last you? Like three days. Oh, that's serious. Mm -hmm. But if it's working and it's getting rid of the, the bloating, you know, for me personally, I got a lot of bloating, you know, been quarantined. In addition to breaking my leg at home, I've been in the bed for six weeks. And when I was in the bed, it was great because Leroy was feeding me, you know, bringing me my food. I couldn't get up. 
But now that I'm up and about, Lord, have mercy. Yeah, it's different. To the refrigerator I go. I, I go too, actually. <laughs> I eat, then I'm looking for what I'm going to eat next. So it's that brings to us to, to food. What, what do you eat? <laughs> right now, I'm eating a lot. But, but you uh, look fantastic. Thank you, because I like catch myself sometimes. But at nighttime is, is when it's the worst. Yep. That's why I should go to bed at a decent time. <laughs> but I don't. I don't go to bed. Um, so I try to meal prep. I'll try to make food for at least three days. Um, and then I'll get tired of it. And then I'll just, like, last night I had in and out Like, it was bad. After I worked out at 11 p.m., like, that's why I like work. <laughs> So I say that to say that it's all about moderation. That's what I'm saying. It's all That's about true. moderation. I eat majority of the healthy food, but every now and then, or every day, almost right now, I'll have a treat. <laughs> What's your favorite treat? Um, I love hamburgers and fries. That's my thing. Mm -hmm. And then I'll eat like cookies, like, uh, you can't even see them, but there's a cookie jar back there that's ah. pretty much almost gone because of me. <laughs> um, <laughs> Oreo cookies or just the vanilla Oreo cookies, yeah. Um. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'll try to meal prep some type of food. I'll try to follow uh, a try to carb cycle because when you carb cycle, I found that when you carb cycle, I'm able to still keep the weight that I want and lean out at the same time. So when I was running track, I was like 105 pounds, very little, mm -hmm. five feet. I was super lean, super, super tiny, but that is what I needed to be to run track. Mm -hmm. Now I'm a grown woman. So, so I want to kind of look a little bit older. I already have a young face. So I try to keep my weight between 130 and 135. Oh, okay. Still is a good thick weight for me. Mm -hmm. um, That's my gold weight, one thirty-five. I saw it a couple of times in my life, try, trying to find my way back there, but it's been a long journey. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard. Oh my god! It's hard. Yeah, the key is just like I said, take it one day at a time. It's really, it's hard because you have other family members. Let's say that you're cooking for a family, you know, there are other people in the house and big people, little people, in between people. How do you manage? For me, it's just me and Mr. Miller, but when I see him cooking, I want what he's having. Even though I have my food, I still want what he's having. Well, I can recall growing up and... <laughs> You were doing Lindora. Yes. And we had to eat whatever you made, whether it was yes. good or bad. And I remember some nasty things <laughs> that we had to eat. So whatever you're cooking in the house, it, apparently, unless we want to starve, we're going to eat it. Yes, yeah, true. Uh, to this day, I'm still trying to figure out what did you guys eat? for those 20 weeks that I did Lindora. I did it, it worked. We didn't have any extra food. We didn't have snacks, we didn't have alcohol. We didn't have anything but Lindora food. What did y'all eat? Yeah, whatever you trying ate. to starve y'all. It was like peanuts, stir fry. Oh, I remember that, that was bomb. Liver. It was a cashew liver. stir fry. <laughs> liver, you remember the liver? Like nasty stuff, <laughs> liver. <laughs> and now I do those same things and I'll make something of my own and okay I'm gonna have this and I'm gonna have that and then Leroy goes in there and the food he's cooking it smells so good and I'm like I just have a little bit and that little bit I made it all and then um it's Tuesday now and then Wednesday because we have leftovers and then I, you know the answer okay day one starting Monday again what would you tell the viewers to get past that acknowledge you know that that's going to happen okay so you need to acknowledge it don't beat yourself up one and then just start over 
I think that when you meal prep, it is a lot better to stay on track with food. That's true. Um, being in the house right now is definitely hard, but if you still meal prep, like I have some salmon and rice already meal prepped in the fridge. Okay. So I know I'm hungry, but sometimes it's like, I don't want that because you're right. home and you have everything else. But I, I think being an athlete and then that just instilled discipline in me. So mm -hmm. once you create the consistency and the discipline, because the motivation, like I said, it comes and goes. If you wait for motivation, you're going to always be waiting. Mm -hmm. So you have to be disciplined. It has to be one day at a time, being consistent. And then you know that if you don't do it, you're not going to get the results that you want. So once you start seeing results, once your energy start picking up, your your stomach is getting a little fat, flat, um, flatter, hey. getting a little fatter, like you start to see results, which makes it a little bit easier to keep going. That's true. That's true. When I step on the scale and I see that I've lost a pound or two, I'm excited to go and continue. But when I see that I've gained a pound, then I'm ready to throw in the towel. Well, your weight fluctuates daily anyway. True. You, especially women, we fluctuate all the time. Our weight fluctuates anywhere between five to 10 pounds all the time. And then it can depend on um, your hormones. What, mm -hmm. did, what is your body doing at that time? Um, women, we have our cycles, so our body fluctuates mm -hmm. for sure. So for me, like the week before my cycle, no, the week after my cycle, I'm like super lean. And then the week mm -hmm. before it, I feel like I'm getting bloat. I feel bloated. Yeah. So I have more weight, but then the next week I'm like, Oh, okay. This is why I felt like this. Mm -hmm. And then it just, it just repeats itself. You have, you have a lot of energy no energy a lot of energy no energy that's just mm -hmm. how women's body is that's mm -hmm. just how our body is is designed um so when you step on the scale another thing like don't step on the scale <laughs> yeah take pictures <laughs> <laughs> that's true because when i step on the scale i'm up i'm down i'm up i'm down i'm happy i'm sad and then it's like ah forget about it let me go find this fried chicken that i really want exactly your weight fluctuates daily so I like to take pictures, uh, okay. progress pictures. So maybe you take them every week at the same time, different times, um, every Monday, every Tuesday, take your pictures. And then once you post them side to side, you can start to see the little differences that okay. your body is improving. Do you and recommend them taking them in the same place, wearing the same clothes in the same pose, or does it make a difference? Well, it doesn't matter where you take them, but I do recommend you taking them in something form fitting. If you can do it in a sports bra and your leggings or a sports bra and your shorts or a bikini. Oh, um, Lord. I bikini? Be, yeah, I know it can be very, very uncomfortable uh, to take a picture of yourself in a bikini, especially if you're not at the goal that you want to be at. That's scary. But <laughs> it's the best way for you to see results. Something that's super tight, maybe you have a tight fitted shirt. Something form fitting, if you so that you can see the progress. It can't be okay. like a loose t shirt and a loose t shirt because that True. doesn't do justice. True, that makes sense. That makes sense. So, what type of working out do you recommend to start? What do you What do you want us to start with? Like, if it's if it's your first time ever working out, yes, in a long time, yeah, ever. So let's go from ever, and then we'll talk about. Like me, I'm pretty active, but then I've been down for six weeks and now I need to get back into that. We'll do that second. So someone who's never worked out in their life and they're, they're seeing your video and they're like, oh my God, she's amazing. I want to be just like her. Where do I start? Um, I recommend you could do like, let's say if you saw one of my videos and you see me and you're like, oh my God, if I did three rounds and you only got halfway through, that's amazing. So I think that everyone's body is different and everyone can adjust differently. So some people may need to only start with a daily walk for 20 minutes. Some people okay. can start with an actual workout, but maybe they go one round or they do 10 reps instead of 20 reps with, light, with only body weight. Um, if you've never done any type of exercising, I always start with body weight type exercises okay. and then you gradually build with the weights 
and gradually build with getting heavier and heavier and heavier so that your body can get used to it. Um, but I don't think that there's no right or wrong way, no right or wrong to getting started as long as you just get started. That's true. And so for the person who's never worked out ever, how many days do you recommend? It depends on their goal. So if you come to me and you tell me that you want to lose weight or if you're training for something, a wedding, a birthday, whatever it is, Mm -hmm. if your goal, if you have a set goal and you have to be there by a certain time, then I will obviously recommend that you should work out probably five to six days a week and take a day off. Or you can go every other day until you're able to go in a row. When I was running track and I was training um, professional, I was training seven days a week. So my rest days was like an easy four mile or easy five mile run. That was a rest day for me. (laughs) So I wouldn't get an actual day where I did absolutely nothing um, for like, I would do like three weeks on and then I would have one day off and then, oh, my God. On and then one day off right now I train, I work out, um, almost every day. Okay. It's kind of the same. Um, yesterday I did weights. So today I'll probably do like some type of cardio, like run outside, m- maybe no time soon, probably at like five or 6 PM. <laughs> I'll wait until the very last minute to go do it. <laughs> <laughs> What's the best time to work out? Some people say in the morning. For me, if I get up in the morning and just do it, like about eight or nine, that works for me because I can do the workout and I'm done and I'm finished. But if I think about it the entire day, by the end of the day, I don't want to do with it. So what's what's the best time? Yeah, it does. It does suck if you go by the end of the day. However, there are people that can work out at in the evening time and they prefer it. So I think it's just, you need to find what works best for you. Mm-hmm. When I was running track, I would train maybe around nine or 10 AM because it mm-hmm. would get super hot. And then I had other things that I had to do that day. Anyway, mm-hmm. I had to coach and, th- and things like that. When, and I had a job that I worked at nighttime. So I would train in the morning and then I would work the rest of the day. Um, working at Orange Theory though, I see everyone come in at different times. So I teach the early morning classes at 5 a.m., which means that we have to be there at 4.40 in the morning. Oh, Members are coming at like 4.50 in the morning. I call them like the one percenters. If you get out at 5 a.m., you're like better than everybody else in the world. That's dedication. I used to do that. I, I did that for a cool minute. We did it probably for about a year. And when the girls didn't come anymore, I was okay with it. It's hard. I was okay. And now nothing will get me up at 4 a.m. unless it's an earthquake. Yeah. (laughs) So they always like to work out in the morning. No matter what, if they're off, Mm -hmm. like let's say it's a holiday, Mm -hmm. the studio is always open on holidays. Wow. If I'm like, please, can we cancel 5 a.m.? If we don't cancel 5 a.m., they will show up at 5 a.m. even though they're off. Wow, so that's dedication. They have already created like a routine. Once you create that routine, it's, it's, and you know, like I have, this is the only time that I have in my day to work out is at 5 a.m. Then you're gonna come at 5 a.m. But then I have members that come to the studio that prefer to work out in the evening time because they feel like if they work out at 5 a.m., they're sleepy the entire day, they're not as productive, mm-hmm. and they much rather do it in the evening time. Mm-hmm. So it just depends on you I like to work out probably around like anywhere between 10 to 12 noon yes yes in the regular normal life that we had before this I will probably work out around that time or sometimes I had things to do in the morning and I will work out after I got off work at teaching at the studio which would be at like 9 p.m 10 p.m because I knew I had to get it done so so when we're not sheltered in place what does your normal day look like your work schedule give us an example um so like on mondays i teach five classes i start at five in the morning and then i'll go Mm. into about 10 45 so i'll just teach them back to back to back to back um then i'll do i have a team call for real estate and then i'll eat something (laughs) in between that Then I'll head to Long Beach. I'll go to the high school. I'll coach. Uh, 
at my alma mater at Long Beach Wilson. And then if I have clients that want to see property, I'll show them property either four or five or 6 p.m. Um, if I don't have clients that want to see properties, then I'll come home and then I'll probably like sit down for a second or maybe an hour or two and then I'll go to the gym. That's, that's on, a lot. That's on like a Monday. That's a long day. On a Tuesday or Thursday, when I teach in the evening time, I'll try to work out either at 10 a.m. or not anywhere between like 9 and 12 noon. I'll try to get my workout done because I don't have to be at the studio until 3.30 on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So it's a little bit better, but it still feels like I'm like trying to hurry up and get it done so that I could get ready, do anything else that I have to do, errands and things like that. And then Wednesday is pretty much the same as Monday. Thursday is the same as Tuesday. And then Friday, I teach early mornings, but I'm done by 8, 15. Oh, okay. So I'll usually work out at the studio because I like to work out with the members sometimes. So they mm -hmm. can just, it's just good for the coaches to work out with them. Exactly. So Friday, it shows that you can do, you know, I'm telling you to do it, but I'm also doing it too. And dying right along with you. Mm -hmm. So that's good. That's very good. So that's on Fridays. I'll do those at, I'll do that at 8.30 um, on AM on Fridays. And then Saturday, it could vary. If we have a track meet or a cross country race, um, I'll just have to work out after that, even though I'm so tired. <laughs> and then Sunday, it don't matter whatever time I decide to go. Oh my. My gym closed at six or seven um, on Sunday. So I'll probably mm -hmm. go like before that sometime. That's a lot. You are doing a lot. So let me understand your coaching. You are also coaching at Orange Theory, like five, six, seven, a million classes, and you're doing real estate. Tell me a little bit about your real estate. How is that working? How long have you been doing it? And who's your typical client? Um, so real estate, I have had my license for a long time. <laughs> I have my license for nine or 10 years. Mm -hmm. I got it right, almost right out of college, a little bit out of college is when I got my real estate license. And then I did absolutely nothing with it. But <laughs> help my mom if she needed me to show a house or whatever, because you have to be licensed to do a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And then in 2017 mm -hmm. or 18, mm -hmm. I started. I started actually putting a little bit more effort into real estate. Um, right around the time when I was going through the process, or when I was trying to figure out the process of real estate and what buyers would need and want. I ended up buying a home, a condo. So that helped me and I saw how it was. I'm like, okay, I actually, I like real estate. It's fun. It's fun doing the showing. I always end up with the best clients um, <laughs> that put me through a lot. Most of my clients are, I don't know at mm -hmm. all. I meet them. They come from um, like third party websites like Zillow. Mm hmm um oh, most of the time most majority of the time literally majority of the time i've helped probably like one friend find a lease um mm -hmm. but real estate is is good i like it it's it's challenging um but it's still i like the fact that i can make my own schedule i can still do mm -hmm. fitness i can still help people one of my goals is really to help the black community because home ownership is down for us there's not a lot of black homeowners. It's not a lot of black young homeowners. It's our turn to own homes now. That's and, true. And a lot of times we're scared because we think that we can't afford it, but we actually can afford it. So how did you do it? I mean, you're, you're young and you own your own place. How did you do that? Just like you said, the average person, especially in your age group, they're paying this astronomical amount of rent but yet you overcame that. How'd you do that? Yeah, I will probably be a real estate agent's best client because <laughs> I literally found a home one weekend. I was like, I'm sold. Um, so how many homes did you look at? Probably four. And you actually found one out of those four. So it is possible. 
that you don't have to look at 100 homes. Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. I, I looked at, I did one weekend, literally one weekend, and I was actually talking to so going through the process I was like let me um call the lender just so I can know what to tell my clients when they ask mm -hmm. so I called him he told me everything that needs to be done he told me what the credit score ideal credit score is how much down payment you would need um the process how the debt to income ratio work and I thought to myself okay well I, I have those things I have money saved I, my credit score is pretty good um and my debt to income ratio is is pretty good mm -hmm. and at the time I was living at home and I wanted to move out anyway because I felt like <laughs> it was about that time I was like I'm turning 33 I should probably move out at home. but there's no rush guys there's no absolutely no rush I think that is a stigma that we have we got to kick our kids out early Listen, if you can stay at home and save money, stay at home and save money until you're ready. That's um, right. So I went through the process of it. I, I found, I went out, I told Joe, I like, Joe, I think I want to do this. That's the lender. I said, Joe, I think I want to do this. What do I need to do? I sent him my information. Um, and then I looked, uh, I have access to everything. So I just found some homes and I literally went out one day, looked at four, five homes, not that many found this one and I was like okay I'm so that was it that's all I needed to do <laughs> that was literally it like I didn't think I didn't need to go see anything else mm -hmm. um because I feel like the more homes you see in my opinion just being in the business is you get a little bit like overwhelmed oh my god can you and say that again you're like <laughs> way too picky when it's your first home it doesn't need to be the home of your dreams it's not going to be the five bedroom, huge walk-in closet um, for our for us. Mm -hmm. There may be people who can have that for their first home. Mm -hmm. It's not, not. I'm not saying that it's not possible, but usually in my age group, my age bracket, 30 to 35, 40 years old, we're in our starter home. So maybe yeah. it's a two bedroom, three bedroom, yeah. one bedroom. Um, it's not going to be super over the top but it's a starter home you're investing exactly. you're building wealth you're starting that generational wealth you just want to start doing something exactly instead of paying three thousand a month rent for something that you don't own exactly you could be paying that same three thousand for a home that you mm -hmm. are making you can make money off of and it's building equity and and things like that so i bought the condo and Literally, I think like a year or two later, somebody else, I like to watch to see what the other condos are selling for. Mm -hmm. And they're selling for higher, like they bought it higher. So I was like, okay, I got a little bit of equity already. And I exactly. didn't do anything. So that's the, the good thing about it. And when I learned that I didn't need 20, 30% down to buy a house. Really? And Tell us about that. Because that's the typical. Sometimes people think like, oh, I need $30,000 to buy a house, which is, would be great. Obviously, it will make your mortgage lower. It will make your interest, like it it will lower your payments and things like mm -hmm. that. That would be great. But you don't need that. There's so many different programs available. Mm -hmm. You can go first, most first-time first home buyers go FHA, which is the least amount of money that you have to put down, usually mm -hmm. three and a half percent. That's the route that I went. Mm -hmm. um then you have the conventional yes that's where you do the 20 percent. Mm -hmm. you have a, a, all these other programs you have down payment assistant programs there's a lot of things out there that can help you if you're really serious about buying mm -hmm. a home you don't have to just sit and be scared and not do it um your credit score yes it be it it, it needs to be decent but i had a client about a year and a half ago who had a 589 credit score so I was like, well, if he could do it, I know a lot of people that probably are like, oh, that was his lowest credit score. Not saying that, you know, we have different tiers for his credit score, but the lowest one, I think I had a low one too that was really low and then the rest of them was pretty high. Mm -hmm. So there's things that you could do if you're serious and you want to start building 
generational wealth, especially in the black community, like yes. we need that. Yes. So if someone is looking for you and they want to buy a home, how do they find you? What do they need to do? Uh, so I have a website. My website is the running realtor. Yay. That is me. That's what I've did for over 20 years. So running, no G, because running was taken. <laughs> so running, <laughs> I am a realtor. You can, same thing on Facebook. Uh, on Instagram, you can find me at Glenn Spin. So two N's in Glenn, and then one N in Spin. Mm -hmm. I am there. I usually am on Instagram a lot more than mm -hmm. I am on Facebook and Twitter. Mm -hmm. um that's where most of my following come from um somebody called me the other day and they I use different hashtags and they're like oh I found you from IE Realtor hashtag so there's so many different ways that you can find me on social media you can just literally type my name in google and I'll pop up <laughs> nice you'll pop up in many many different varieties many different varieties pictures that I was like oh I wish they take that down <laughs> so again for the person that just want to start they want to buy a house what do they do first what's step one step one i would say review your own credit okay look at your own credit not through credit karma like actually go to a credit website like free credit report or fico you running your own credit is not the same as a dealership running your credit mm -hmm. so that's a that's the biggest thing you should be tracking your credit constantly just to make sure that you're on the right track and if there's anything on there that you think shouldn't be on there then that's when you need to dispute or call the creditors mm -hmm. write letters make if you do a settlement in the letter it should say you know if I pay this will you delete this nice off of my credit like those nice. are things that you could do you don't have to necessarily go out and pay somebody to fix your credit although it does help if you don't know where to start mm -hmm. it does help but there are like different YouTubes that you can look at if you don't if you don't have a lot of money you can figure it out on your own it just takes mm -hmm. a lot longer very good do you recommend them going to look at houses before they've done that before they talk to a lender for example, people will say, I just want to see houses. And if I see one I like, you know, then I'll talk to the lender. What do you say to people that have that mindset? They can look online. <laughs> I'm not taking you out. <laughs> I'm sorry. And before I would, because I'm like, oh, yay. I will take you out, show you a house. And then you don't have any money. So you're wasting my time because essentially as a realtor, we work for free literally until the end of the process so i could be working for free for you for 45 days for three months for six months 30 days it varies so i'm not going to waste my gas and my time and my energy and taking you somewhere and you know that you got a 400 credit score and you <laughs> tell me so it, it doesn't make sense you can just scroll on zillow <laughs> and now doing the corona isn't it true that the sellers want to have qualified real buyers before they let you in their house? Yes, all, a lot of them are saying, is this, is this person serious? Uh, there's different forms that we have to fill out now too. So it's best to just be prepared and go through that. So first looking at your credit, making sure it's great. And then second, reaching out to a real estate agent, me, i.e. me. Uh, and then third, talking to a lender. So mm -hmm. oftentimes I'll get questions like, well, how much money do I need? Or, you know, what do my income need to be? And what's my debt to income ratio? And what's my credit score need to be? I don't, honestly, that's not my expertise. So I don't really guide people in that way. I always send them to Joe. I always will recommend Joe because he did my home loan. I think he's great. So I'll always recommend them to the lender mm -hmm. and let them go through that process. And I think a lot of times in my generation, in my opinion, when people don't want to work with like people that they know, their friends, they think that will know their business. I don't know anything that goes on with the lender Very good. And, and what anything in whatever is on your credit score. 
I don't know any of that information. I do know your credit score because we send it when we're making an offer. I do know how much money you like your proof of funds that you would need to put into escrow. Mm -hmm. I will know that, but I don't know like what's in your bank account. I don't know what you're buying and things like that. All of that. I I let that be with between you and the lender. Unless you tell me, I don't know anything. So everything everything is always confidential between us anyway. Mm So I just say, those are the, the three steps. Your own, look at your own credit talk to a realtor, and then talk to a lender. And then once you do that, the lender could tell you, yes, you're on track. We can see, like, we could work with something. This could be your budget. Your budget could be 300000 Then that's what that's what our budget is to find a home. Or 600000 that's what the budget is to find a home. Or they could put you on a six-month path or whatever that path is to get you in, on track to owning a home. Like they would be able to do that for you. Very good. Very good. Very good. So tell us again, how can we find you? We're going to make sure that the title slides are at the end, but I want people to truly know how do they find Glenn Spin, the running realtor? Is you have a phone number? What's your phone number? Yeah. Yes. I don't want to get my phone number out, but. <laughs> it's posted everywhere anyway. I know, but still. <laughs> um, <laughs> How do you like to be contacted? What's the best way? Do you like Instagram? Do you like Facebook? What's your favorite? You know, any way is good (laughs) for me, honestly. Um, You can find me. You can text me. You can call me. You can email me. GlennisTSeldon at gmail.com. Instagram, Glennspin with two N's in Glenn. Facebook, the Glennis Selden is my personal page with my business page is The Running. No G, Realtor. And then that's my website as well, The Running Realtor. So, what's the name of your company? So, I'm with the Eminem Team Realty, as you can see it right there. <laughs> She's my broker. Oh, man. And so now we're going to close it back. We're going to go back to the fitness. What is the one thing that you want to leave with your people, especially me? What do you want me to do? so that I can lose 20 pounds. The one important thing. I think the biggest thing is you really need to figure out why is it important for you to lose that 20 pounds. Hmm. That's good. Why do you want to grow a bigger booty or why do you need a flat stomach? Why? Is it because you want people to be looking at you? That's me. I want everybody to look at me. I want them to turn heads when I walk by. I want them to be like, dang, her butt big. (laughs) <laughs> so that's why I keep doing it <laughs> that's, that's a good point that's, that's I want to fit my clothes I have nice clothes in my closet I have two closets maybe yeah two closets two full closets almost and I don't want to buy any more clothes well if that is going to be strong enough to keep you going every single day it has to be something that's strong enough to keep you going every single day hmm, or that's good. majority of the days. Okay. And good. once you figure that out, then it's just starting, figure out a plan. Maybe you reach out to somebody on, on social media. Now there's so many free workout videos that you can find. You can YouTube workout videos, just start something. True. That's true. That's very, very good. Excellent. Well, we got a message. I have a message. Yeah, I said that uh, Donna said, girl, you're a hot mess. I am. <laughs> That's literally my why. My why is I want people to, when I'm walking by, to be like, dang. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we have to be honest with ourselves. Taylor said she appreciates our honesty, your honesty, and that you're making great points. So I think one of my whys is I'm going to be going to this beautiful young lady's wedding and I want to look cute when I go. Okay. I want to look cute, doggone, because you guys are going to be cute. I already know. So I have to catch up with you guys because, you know, Mr. Miller looking at me a little bit sideways. I can't have him looking better than me. That's not cool. So I have to catch up with him. So final thoughts. You get to close us out. Okay, well, 
when it comes to fitness and a healthy active lifestyle like i said the number one thing i recommend is definitely figuring out why you want to do something whatever that reason is like she said maybe it's a wedding that gets you started maybe it's your birthday that gets you started but whatever it is that gets you started just be consistent with it take it one day at a time consistency is the key motivation comes and goes you'll never be motivated every single day it's just that's just how it is. You'd be motivated in the beginning and then it'll slowly wear off, then it'll come back and then it'll wear off. It's all about discipline and being consistent with it. And then once you start seeing results, then you start to get a little bit more motivation, a little bit more discipline. And remember, it takes at least eight weeks for you, probably your own personal self, to notice that long that. Yes, because we see ourselves every day. We don't think that we're making progress. Okay. Most people will notice it in four weeks if they haven't seen you in a while. But your own personal self, it takes you about eight weeks, eight to 12 weeks. So if you just stick with something for at least break it down into smaller increments, I'm going to go 30 days and then you go another 30 days and then another 30 days, then you'll start to see results and stay off of the scale. All right, I'm going to put the scale away. As of today, I'm no longer getting on the scale because you know I got on it this morning. So I already know what the scale says. So I'm not going to get on it for 30 days. Yeah, you can get on it in the beginning right now, but take pictures. Take pictures of your progress. Remember, wear something form-fitting, wear a sports bra, maybe a bathing suit, whatever it is, something that's going to shock you. Mm -hmm. um, and then every week, take a picture in the same outfit. Just keep taking a picture of the same outfit or something similar to that week after week after week. That way you'll see results. Then at the end of the 30 days, you can step on the scale. Maybe you won't even be concerned about the scale at that point. Hey. Because you, you notice the changes in your body. Sometimes we get so caught up on the number on the scale instead of noticing like the changes in our body. It's not necessarily a certain number that makes you healthier. It's like, if I would have said 130, Mm -hmm. 10 years ago I'd be like oh my god I'm so big I'm so big but it's mm -hmm. not big so it's just all about how it's proportioned that how you transfer the fat to the muscle so just get off the scale <laughs> all right I like that because Mr. Miller don't step on the scale at all I'll be trying to get him on the scale just so I can see what he's doing and he won't get on the scale at all but I can tell by my my clothes I can tell and I just be so mad because yeah. I can see what he's doing and I can see him flattening out. And then I'm even mad because he's flattening out and I ain't. So well, I am going men to... are different. Men are different. Men yes, are they different. are. Men are different. I took notes. I am going to take everything that you said into heart. And I am just extremely proud of you because, of course, you're my baby. And you'll always be my baby. Yes, you'll be 99 and some change. But I'm very proud of you. You're outstanding. And we're going to end here. If there are any questions, they can reach you one more time on IG. Glenn Spin, two ends and Glenn. <laughs> Outstanding. All right, we're out, you guys. Have a great evening.